everyone, have something special for you today. We've invited Steve Gray, who's the pastor of Burley Church of Christ, to come and preach. What we did was, with his permission, we grabbed one of his sermons. But it's like he's going to be here in the flesh. It's going to be awesome. And our prayer is that you will be enriched today, wherever you come from. My name is Ralph Mayhew. It's my privilege to um, pastor this online community, and which includes Burley Hedge Uniting Church and Burley Village Church. And if you're from anywhere else in our, our glorious world, we, uh, we welcome you today. We hope this is a, a blessing. Um, and, well, let's pray, shall we? Let's pray. Loving God, we thank you that we can come together. We can just access community and worship through a screen. And what a privilege that is that in past generations they did not have this luxury. And so, Lord, use this technology today to come real to us, to come close to us. May you carry Steve's message from your heart into our hearts, that we might be enriched, challenged, and called forward in your name. We pray these things in your glorious name. Amen. So, without further ado, let's go. Your love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love, oh, higher than the mountains. Trials 
Today we're celebrating communion with one another. How awesome is that? And so I'll give you just a couple of moments to, um, to go and gather some bread and some, uh, some drink. And again, whatever's available to you, please make the most of those things. It's not so much about the particular elements, it's that we share them with Christ, that we share them together. So um, yeah, you've got a few moments just to gather those things now. Next week, gang, we are at church. Ha, see what I did there? We're not really, because we're the church every week, right? But we actually get to come together in human form and encourage one another and pray for one another and be together. So 4 p.m. next Sunday, Village Church, see you here. We're upstairs in the Burley Hedge Uniting Church on the corner of Burley Street. Join us at 4 p.m. Don't be late. We're not going to be starting the services late like we have been on time to allow for the kids. It's all shifting next week, so we'll see you here and, um, and be socially distanced when you arrive. No tea and coffee, no hanging out corporately, none of the fun stuff, right? Wow, well, it's not really the fun stuff. The fun stuff's the God's stuff, and it's going to be great next week as we talk about the Holy Spirit. See you there. We are praying. Prayer meeting is happening on Tuesday night. Here's the address right in here for you to log in on 7.30 on Tuesday night. I won't be there, but the portal will still be open. So you can still log on and still pray with one another. And up here is our SMS prayer line. So if there's anything you need prayer for or anyone you know who needs prayer, use this to text in a prayer request or give this number to somebody else who you think it might be helpful for. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my tomb Jesus till I met you I was breathing but not alive And all my failures I tried to hide It was my turn Till I met you You called my name I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You called my name I ran out 
out of that grave Out of the darkness To your glorious day Now your mercy has saved my soul Now your freedom is all that I know The old made new Jesus, when I met you You called my name I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness To your glorious day You called my name I ran out of the grave Out of the darkness To your glorious day I needed rescue, my sin was heavy But chains break the weight of your glory I needed shelter, I was an orphan But now you call me citizen of heaven When I was broken, you were my healing Now your love is the air that I'm breathing I have a future my eyes are open when you called my name I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness To your glorious day You called my name I ran out of that grave out of the darkness into your glorious day I'm Emily Tata Milizaliwa 1989 na nilipata nilijipata niko kwa street mamangu alinizaa kiwa pia yeye kwa street so alikuwa street family pia yeye sasa nime kwa hiyo street nimepitia maneno mingi sub from 5 years to from 5 years nilikuwa naenda gate to gate nikiomba chakula pata chakula ilikuwa ni shida kupata nguo ilikuwa ni shida so tulikuwa tunaenda kwa garbage tunatafuta chakula kwa garbage papers easy garbage papers na nguo sometimes tuko napata zile watu wame dump labda uli, ulipaka stain umetupa kwa nini kwa hiyo karatasi tunarudi tunachukua tunaenda tunafua tunavaa we survive in different ways sometimes tunaenda gate to gate kuomba chakula na kuna time tuko tunaenda kwa gate unaenda kuomba chakula unapata kama gate man lazima akutumie ndio akuruhusu kupita ndio wende upate chakula na sometimes unapatiwa chakula vizuri sometimes unapatiwe so ikuwa once sabu ni ile time anataka ndio unafanya ile time anataka ndio unafanya so hapo ndio nilikuja kuwa pregnant nikiwa 13 years old mpaka nikafikisha 19 years hapo ndio nilikuja kupatana na watu wa Alpha na nilipatana nao through feeding program. So hapo ndio venye nilifanya Alpha kwa sababu ndio nilikuja kupata the first people wenye walinionyesha true love. Nikakuwa nikaona hey hao watu wako na upendo yenye sijai experience from the from the day I was baptized. Nikakuwa na hiyo passion ya kufundisha watu kuwaleta kwa Christ in churches, in schools in with old women with young mothers from the street and also with 
small boys and also big boys huko kwa kiwanja through grace ya Mungu nilianza kufanya nikaanza kufundisha wasichana wa street so it it has been a good thing i love it yeah. All right, let me introduce Steve Gray to you, Pastor Steve Gray. He is the pastor at Burley Church of Christ, just up the road opposite Stocklands. Village Church have done a number of things with Church of Christ over the years. And as a congregation that we come together, we're hoping to, to continue that. They're a wonderful group of people doing some amazing work in this community. And Steve is a really dear friend. And I'm very excited to introduce him to you and let him be a conduit for the Spirit of God to bless you. So please enjoy the next next few minutes with Steve as he talks about Acts and leads us into what it means to be spirit-led and spirit-filled followers of Jesus. Thanks, Steve. Great to be here with you, kind of, online. It's great to have technology and the volunteers that are putting us together. Uh, We've got a pretty meaty passage today, I reckon, something that can be pretty divisive in some circles, in churches, but um, I'm excited to unpack it and I couldn't pick the timing better as we, um, as literally we, we do church a different way and gives us space to reflect on some of this stuff. It'll make more sense in a minute, but let me pray and we'll dig into the passage, which is Acts 1, chapter 2. Let me pray. Father, Lord, uh, Father God, just please um, let these be your words. Let this be your message. Let you speak from the passage um, Father, and uh, stir within us in a mighty way this morning as we reflect on your spirit, which can be translated in other ways, your breath, um, but your set apart presence, your Holy Spirit that can stir within us, Lord, whether we're in our homes, in a building or outside, Lord, it's, it's available to us all. And so this morning, let your spirit stir. And let us reflect on what it means to have the honor of being able to have your presence stirring amongst us. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Acts chapter 1, verse 2. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came, uh, Pentecost is just a name for the festival that was happening at that time. So all together, as Jesus had asked them to wait. And so suddenly there came a a sound from the heaven like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. It divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the the multitude came together. Love that. The multitude came together and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, are not all of those who are speaking Galileans? Now, again, that's a slur. So they're going, they're just Galileans. How are they speaking? How are they multi-bilingual or whatever? (laughs) And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Perithians, Mercedes, and Lemnites, and residents of Judea, and Pontus, and Asia, and Phaegra, and Palympha, and Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans, and Arabians, pronounced all those words perfectly, take note, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others mocking, saying they were filled with new wine. What a story. (laughs) The Holy Spirit. Jesus leaves. He says, something's coming, guys. I need to go back to the Father, need to ascend. But there's a reason because something's coming. The Holy Presence of God is coming. So wait for me. Because what's going to happen is going to change everything. (laughs) So they waited 40 days, and then this story happens. They're in this upper room, and the Spirit falls on this group. It says like fire on their heads. Now, not fire, not literal fire on their heads, 
but like a fire on their heads. And they started speaking in tongues that everyone understood. And I love that. I love how human and holy the Bible is at times. Because if you're trying to convince someone, if you're writing something that is a lie or propaganda, you don't include bits like this (laughs) where some people are going, I reckon they're drunk because they're acting so strange. And then Peter calls them together, and we didn't read that bit yet, but Peter calls them into repentance to be saved and to start walking with his spirit into a new life. A profound mystery. (laughs) An uncomfortable mystery for some. A very uncomfortable mystery for others. A massive generalisation here, but us modern Western people, we kind of hate mysteries. Don't get me wrong, we love mystery novels because it gets solved, but we, we, we struggle with the unknown. And I believe it's, again, we can't control it. We can't box this in neatly. We can't hide this by description. That's strange. We can't explain this perfectly. It's a difficult, mysterious uh, story and, and coming of the spirit that makes us sit in the mystery. You may not understand what I'm trying to say, and maybe I can say it this way, if you're, especially if you're new to Jesus. Our Christian movement, uh, there is 300 different major um, denominations. So there's Christ- Christian, and then within that Protestant movement, not counting Catholics, there's 300 different major denominations. And then there's 33,000 variations of that 300. <laughs> so, to again broad strokes, um, people can't control things in their church, or they they can't agree on unspecific or un um, unessential things. And so, what do they do? They disagree, and then they need to break up and box that belief in again. And so, it starts with Jesus, and that's the main important thing. He's a savior, and and then boom, 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 boom. They split, 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 split until you have thirty three thousand variations. Because we hate mystery. (laughs) We hate not boxing in our beliefs. And the issue of this passage in the Holy Spirit has caused some of those denominations. Again, if I could oversimplify it and paint with a very broad stroke, I believe half of these things, if not more, come from Too much time trying to control the spirit. Too much time as Christians trying to box it in. Too much time even trying to explain it, although teaching on it is good. That's what we're doing now. But too much time that we actually forget to do anything with it. (laughs) That the church has actually forgot to live in and with the spirit because it's trying to spend so much time boxing in its parameters. As a person said to me at another church that I once visited, um, when they spoke about a pastor that had come before them and got sacked many, many years ago, they said, I said, oh, why did they get sacked? What happened? They said, they went Pentecostal. And he laughed as if it was some sort of name calling or slur that this pastor had had a different understanding of the spirit working. How that much must, must, must break God's heart. Because the word of God tells us exactly what the spirit, the third personhood of the Trinity, you have the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit came for. It tells us exactly what it's meant to do in us and with us. And I want to explore three of those things today through the scripture. The sad irony is the first thing we see the Spirit do in us is a call to unity. A call to unity. The first thing the Spirit does is unifies us. Let me read here. Now they are dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And the sound, the multitude came together and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. 
Does this story, if you know your Bible, if you've been around church long enough, if you're not, that's okay. But if you have, does this story remind you of another story? How about Genesis 11.6? The Lord said, if as one people speaking the same language have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they'll not understand each other. In Genesis 11, God sees man building things together for their own glory, to try to be God or to try to compete with him. It's a tower, Tower of Babel it's called. He sees the potential of them when they work together, but not potential for good. A potential in the human heart to want our own praise, our own agenda, and he knows how destructive that is. And so he babbles their language, making and forcing the people to scatter. What do we see in Acts chapter 1? He unbabbles them. <laughs> because with Jesus' sacrifice now happening, or happened, they can now build something together new. But not a physical structure, not a tower, not something to their own glory, but a spiritual kingdom with a different spirit. The first thing the spirit does is brings them together so they understand each other. They don't all have to be the same, but they can come together under one kingdom. The book we're currently in at the moment, Ephesians, explicitly tells us this, if you're still not following. Ephesians 4.3 says, Make every effort to keep the unity of what? Of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body, one Spirit, not 33,000 different variations of a denomination. There is one body, one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope, when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. The Spirit can unify us. In fact, it's its first purpose we see in the Bible. The Spirit came to unify everyone who looks to follow Jesus. The rich, the poor, the young, the old, the sick, the well. Everyone is called by the Spirit to come together and what? Be the church. No big tower to our own glory, but a kingdom for him or a kingdom under him as the king. So why is this so hard? <laughs> To again oversimplify it. But we see this. We're different. All different. And we try to control, box each other in. Um, we try to compete. And again, we spend so much time trying to box this thing in. We forget the actual purpose of the church, the purpose of the Spirit. Ephesians again. What a great book to be in through this series tells us again. He gave himself some of the apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to unity of the faith and knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Ephesians 4. This talks about that there's these gifts, that we are different. We all have different gifts, different passions. There's this deep stirring. I love the writer puts it, some people are evangelists. Some want to go into the dark and find people and bring them home. We all have that attitude, but some are gifted in that. Some are teachers. Some have ways with words, explaining things. Some are apostles. They pioneer. They, some are prophets. Some understand the times and read things that are going on through the Spirit. These things aren't so we can brag and box and compete or make others feel bad because, oh, you're not gifted in that. Oh, sorry. 
you can't come to our denomination or whatever. Oh, you think that? But you still follow Jesus? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. You wear that? (laughs) You like that? (sighs) The point here, the spirit is to grow in the knowledge of Christ. These gifts are given so we can explore together and grow into the fullness of Christ, which I don't think any of us actually get to in this lifetime. But we're always heading towards deeper waters with Christ. And it's amazing. And it's something to behold. And it what is, it, it's what it means to be the church. We, the church. People are so bent, generalization, but it's true. People are so bent towards making this stuff divisions that the, the, the author of Corinthians, the church in Corinth, sorry, has to spell it out. Listen how specific they need to get. In Corinthians 1.12, it says this. Actually, rather than reading, I'll give you the gist, but Corinthians 1.12 talks about a body. And basically says, in the body, there are different parts. <laughs> and there's arms and there's legs. Don't be jealous if you're an arm and you, there's a leg that does that part. Don't be jealous. Be the arm. Be the leg. Be your part of the body. If the spirit hits you and you feel like dancing, go for it. But if you're worshipping God in your mind and you the spirit hits you and you feel like worshipping, but that for you is put your hands in your pocket, go for it. More importantly... If you're good at baking and you love the whole street with that, then do it. If you've got a gift with connecting and loving seniors, do it. If you're passionate about business and you can glorify God through that, then do it. Awesome. Use those giftings. Just move in this unifying spirit. Be gifted. Grow in it. Courage each other and do it towards love. 1 Corinthians 13, if I speak in the tongues of men and angels, which sounds pretty cool, but I do not have love, I am a noisy gong or clanging cymbal. If you do any of this, but you don't understand the purpose for it, if you don't understand it's to bring love, it's to bring Christ, it's to grow you, then you're just making noise. If I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, which sounds pretty awesome if you can remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. A person may be the most supernaturally gifted person you've ever met that they can move mountains, but they don't have love or do it in love or understand the purpose and unifying, growing, gifting spirit then they're nothing. Not my words. I don't think I'd be that harsh, (laughs) but this is the word of God. If I give away all I have, even if I'm generous, if I deliver up my body to be burned, but don't have love, I gain nothing. Pretty heavy verse to be read at weddings. (laughs) It's pretty epic. The spirit grows and gifts you for his purpose. The Spirit grows and gifts you for His purpose. Just imagine this for a second. I won't go too far down this, but imagine if the global church understood this. Imagine if we were all one church. Imagine if you had your big, loud, charismatic speakers and they were accountable and they sat under the deep, profound thinkers. One connects with people, brings them in. The evangelists did their thing. They pushed them towards people who are good with discipleship and they they help people do the deep work of Christ in them to go back out. They had people that were actually confirmed, gifted in prophecy, could read the times, could understand what God is doing, could inform the church. Imagine if we just didn't have 33 denominations under Jesus, 33,000. And imagine we're able to wrestle with each other. As Church of Christ, the mantra goes, um, in in the essentials unity, in a non-essentials liberty, and in everything love. (laughs) Imagine we actually live like that, how powerful the church could be. 
I don't want to go on about that, but how sad it must be for God to look down and see us so divided. So I've kept saying that the Spirit has a purpose. It's the reason it unifies us. It's the reason it equips us. It's the reason it grows us. This reason is probably the last point I want to talk about. And it's stated by Peter and actually even stated by Jesus, but we'll get to that. Peter gets up, as said, and after the Holy Spirit comes, he calls people to repent. He talks to David and their descendants and to the Jews at that time, but everyone can hear it. And he's saying, um, repent, start living under Jesus on a different path. And then he says this. I'd encourage us this week to go back and read the whole sermon, but the end of it says this. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Repenting meaning change your mind, change your direction, focus on Jesus, and you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many others, he bore witness and continued to encourage, exhort them, saying, save yourselves from this crooked generation so that you who received his word were baptized and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. No, Actually, no word convert there or join our club. Change your direction. Change your mind. And start living in the kingdom of Jesus. You receive unity, this gift of unity through the Spirit. You receive gifting through the Spirit. And you'll be fully equipped and you'll be able to grow deeper and more wider. And maybe 3,000 souls will be added that day. That's pretty awesome. You see, the Holy Spirit did not come so that we sit in a room, play some songs, actually scrap that, fight over songs, have story time from a paid professional and then wait till we do it next week. He came to move us out to unbox us, not to go back to building a tower. Side note, not bashing the building, love the building, can't wait to get together. It's phenomenal. We're blessed. We're so blessed. But if you think that's it, if you think that's the purpose of the Holy Spirit, then that's okay, but you're mistaken. So much more, so much more. We've missed the point if we think it's just about gathering, but we forget that it's about growing and it's about going. Not so we can get some stats on salvation, but so the kingdom can be built and all can be unified under Christ. All can grow and be gifted with him and the way God intended for them at creation as we go. Powered, unified, gifted, equipped by the Holy Spirit. But don't take my word for it. Last passage here today, Jesus and his angels actually say it best. Listen to this. Acts 1.8, Jesus says this, but you will receive power when the Spirit has come upon you. Tells them this. You will be my witnesses. Where? In Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria. He says Jesus says, when you get the Spirit, it's going to move outwards. It's to power you to go outwards. It's moving you to go outwards. And when he said these things and he ascended, they were looking up. He was lifted up and the cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven, this is important, Behold, two men stood by, angels in white robes, and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go. They're staring up, watching heaven. He says, (laughs) I love this. Angels, hey, don't you have something Jesus just asked you to do? Why are you still looking up there? Isn't there something Jesus literally just asked you to do? (laughs) Why are you still standing looking at the heavens? Go get out there. Experience, move, grow, live with this news in 40 days and the spirit and bear witness. Church, I wrote this last bit and I wasn't sure if I'd preach it. I wanted to pray about it. 
But I've been praying. I've been praying this whole COVID time, as many of you have been. And I really feel led to say this. Um, as I've seen the church flourish in this season because it's been forced to be pushed out. Our church, I'm talking. Now, most of the time I talk about wide church. I'm talking about Burley Church of Christ. We can't return as a church that has boxed the spirit in. We can't be a church. I'm not saying we were entirely, but this is the conviction after reading this. We can't be a church that talks more about the style of music, the clothes people wear, the religious practice, the money in the bank, the building things we used to, the, the things we used to, the building, the things we used to do, the things we used to like or we like now. Which preacher preaches on Sunday? It's mostly me, but <laughs> yuck. That stuff needs discussion at times, but we can't go back to making that the conversations that happen in our church and in our morning tea area. Of course, some of that's good even. But I can't read this passage. I can't read through Ephesians as we're finishing up next week in that book. I can't read the passage about the Holy Spirit and its purpose. I can't lead the church and just have us look up at heaven and forget what we're meant to be doing. When the Spirit has placed us here, right here in this time, in this community, in this way, in Burley, to go, to move, to be unified, not under a common practice, but under Jesus and with help, with a lot of help from his spirit for his purpose, to see people move towards Jesus and then be radically changed and grown and transforming their lives. Not just to do stuff, but to be in the fullness of Christ. And so I don't know what that looks like, but we're going to come back different. We have to learn from this season and the spirit and the original church. We're going to have to come back different. So this week I invite you to make some time to fast, if applicable, to your health. Don't do it if it's not going to cause. To pray and ask the Spirit to stir in you, to help us be more unified towards a common mission, to grow your gifting and to grow you deeper than ever before, and to help in place a renewed sense of his mission and what that means to us as a church. If the spirit is a foreign concept and you're fairly new to church and it's a bit, it's been a bit, ooh, <laughs> and a bit mysterious, then I invite you not to do some ritual or dance to try to make the spirit come. No, 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 not at all. I ask you to do what they do here. Wait and pray. If you've never experienced the spirit, make time for some quietness. Take a silent space. In fact, I encourage us all to do this, but especially if, you're, if this is a foreign concept. Sit, read some scripture. Invite the spirit to stir within you. Some days you'll feel really silly and you'll sit there and you'll wonder why you did that. You'll be a bit agitated because you want to get on with the day. Some days... More often than not, you'll feel a deep sense of peace in stopping and reflecting and inviting the spirit to stir. And then other days, you might even feel inspired. A sense that something is stirring. Again, instead of reaching for your phone first thing in the morning, instead of scrolling through it at the end of the day, I encourage us, maybe connect with the spirit first and end with the spirit last. Maybe it wants to say something to you. Maybe it wants to stir into something in you. 
So a couple of questions to ask each other, ask each other the phone and yeah, however you need to. How do you currently connect with the Spirit? What does it look like for you to make more time to connect with the Spirit? And how do you think the Spirit has equipped or challenged you in this season for the next one? What's it doing in you? You know, dynamite was the word that the Spirit, to explain the Holy Spirit when it came, or the the outward power. Years later, they would actually use that same word (laughs) to create the word dynamite. Um, Holy Spirit didn't come from that. Dynamite came from that. And it's because in the consciousness of human history, when the Holy Spirit hit people, when the Holy Spirit uh, unified, grew, equipped and sent, it was not unlike an explosion. My prayer is not to discourage us this morning. My prayer is to let the Spirit encourage us and come back like that, like dynamite. Let's pray. Father, I just pray that your spirit sits on us this morning or whatever time. Pray we can make more time to listen. Make more time to allow the spirit to do deep work within us. Ask the spirit to reveal our purpose, our call, our giftings and allow it to push out even when it's uncomfortable, allow it to power us, power us, allow us, allow it to, to reveal God's Christ light in us into those dark places, to send us out, to immobilize us, to move us as individuals, but as a community as well, Lord. May your spirit fall on Burley Heads Church of Christ more than ever in this season and the next. May you guide our feet and may you give us the strength and the wisdom to do so in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Welcome to our home and we just want to invite you to partake in communion with us. It's this holy meal that Jesus gathered his closest friends to him and shared on the night before he was betrayed. Kids, people are sharing in this communion. Haim, what does communion mean? Um, it means I like, um, communion means to me that we're having Jesus' blood, Jesus' body. Wow, that's good. So he comes really close to us. Mm. Yeah, wow. What do you think it means, Az? What does it mean to you? Um, it, it means that you get to know and meet Jesus and celebrate him for when he died on the cross. It's difficult at the moment, isn't it? We can't actually be together in one large group as we might normally do communion together. But we'd encourage you to take the elements and to partake in this together online that we might all be doing it with people all around the world this Sunday. We pray that this meal blesses you, that God meets you through it, and that you find and experience a sense of transformation. Let's pray. Loving God, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for the opportunity to dine and to eat with you, that you might feed us, you might nurture us, you might forgive us, you might bless us and wash away all the things we've held on to. But Lord, through partaking in this bread and this cup, that you would bring transformation and nourishment and new life to us. And so bless these elements, Lord. We ask this in your powerful name. Amen. We're now going to listen to the words of St. Paul as he wrote to the church in Corinth about this very meal. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink of it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So Jesus gathered with his disciples and he took the bread and he broke it. He said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in the same way to remember for what I've done and to, to allow it to relive in your lives. In the same way, he took the cup, he gave thanks and he drank from it, renewing the covenant that we have. This is the cup that we get to share in with Jesus. This is the bread that we get to share with Jesus. This is the meal that we get to share with Jesus and with each other. So let's take some time now to partake in this meal together. May God bless you as we do. We'd encourage you now to take the bread and to take the cup and to serve each other. If you're by yourself, and there's no need to do that, you can just partake in these elements yourself. If you're with others, share the bread first and eat it. Share the cup and drink it. You may wish to say a short prayer. In a few moments, we'll come back together. Stirring us a meaning when the morning turns to evening. Spirit stirring us a hope for in you we find our shared together let's now pray loving god this bread and this wine may they not only feed us and quench our spiritual hunger and our spiritual thirst but may they sustain us may they sustain us in a period where we are still restricted in the interactions we can have with others where we're still mindful and some of us may well be fearful of what the future holds Lord, remove that fear from us and replace it with a love and a hope for the things that you have to come. And may you put a blessing on each person that is partaking in this today. May you bless them and their families, that we are blessed to be a blessing, to carry that blessing forward, to show others it, to reveal it to others, that they may see you in all your glory through your good works. We pray these things in your wonderful name. And everybody agreed and said, Amen. 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 There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare your living hope. Your presence, Lord And I've 
tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone in your presence Lord oh Holy Spirit you are welcome here come flood this place fill the atmosphere your glory God is what my heart longs for to be overcome by your presence Lord your presence Tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and the chains are undone in your presence. I really hope you were encouraged by that word, that you were uplifted, you were challenged, you were blessed, you were met by the Spirit of God. Thanks, Steve, for, for offering that. It's deeply appreciated. And, and may you go forward this week, all of you, with the presence and the, the Spirit and the blessing of God heavy on your lives, thick in your hearts that Everyone you might meet might encounter the Spirit of God at work in you. Be blessed in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.